seasons change. They go from summer to fall to winter to spring to summer again. The cycle or full circle of how God created the world was such that he intended for us to know that there will always come seasons. There'll be change in your life. There'll be times where you no longer put on your shorts and your take off your shirt or you wear a t-shirt, but that you have to put on more clothes, that you have to prepare yourself for the rainy seasons, that you have to be ready for the winter seasons, that you have to get mindful of those times when spring is coming and you want to plant something and you want it to grow, but also those times when you know because the rains have fallen and it looks cold out and that little white stuff that comes floating down that some people go, oh, it's snow. By that time, it's a little late to be getting ready to bring your plants inside because snow will cause most plants to die. So God already prepares the plants. They have within their own genetic makeup the knowledge of the seasons. They adapt to spring, summer, fall, winter, they know and prepare themselves to go through these seasons of life. The creation that God has made in the world knows its seasons. Sometimes we as Christians, you know, we forget that God created us in His image and that we need to reflect back to Him who we are according to how He created us, not how we are recreating ourselves. You see, anyone can live in the far north because we have created such an environment that we can build houses that have heaters based upon generators that create this warm environment where we can be on the inside, take off all our warm clothes, you know, and enjoy, you know, the goodness of our own creation. But then when we walk outside where it's frigid and frozen and ice covered, we have to put on all these clothes to keep us warm. But we still can live there, and I have. Or we could, you know, live in the South Pacific, you know, where it's always warm, more or less, you know, and gradually our body changes and our blood's not as thick, you know, like if an Alaskan goes to the South Pacific, believe me, he's sweating. But the point is, is that once he lives there for a little while, he adapts to it. He changes as God causes his body to adapt to the warmth. And so his blood thins and he becomes more adaptable to that environment that he's living in. The same thing is true when you go through seasons. You see, there's a time and a season and a place for everything under the sun. A time to be born, a time to die. There's a time that you should be prepared for. You know, Jesus coming again. There's a time where Jesus isn't coming and you should be doing the work that God has told you to do. There's a time when you should be involved with the world and its way, so to speak, with God in you. And a time when you should pull back and spend time alone with God. There is a time for everything under the sun. And God has prepared you for that time. He has chosen you to spend quality time in His Word to understand the seasons of life, the seasons of your soul, the times that you're going to go through that you're going to need God or you will need the church. You will need another person or you will need a wife. You will need to have children or you will need to have children of the faith. Because those things bring out a quality in you that you wouldn't have any other way. You see, God knows what you need. And He has adapted you and created you in His image to become part or one with what He's done in creation. You see, Jesus said it this way, that I pray that they may be one as I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And that all of creation seem to obey Jesus as he was here in the world because they recognize the Creator. When Jesus is in you, then you become more adaptable and more malleable. You become a little more in sync with what's going on in the world and in the spiritual kingdom that God has caused to come onto the earth that he's going to set up when he comes back again. That you begin to look at creation, even though it's under a curse, a little differently. You begin to see that, wow, the leaves, they're turning color. Fall's coming. You begin to hear 
the rhythm, so to speak, of how God has created the world and its ways. And you begin to adapt your lifestyle to be the same as how God originally intended the world to be. Because you see, man is always pushing back against creation. He wants to change it in some way. Even genetically engineering it so that it can grow anytime, anywhere, any place. You know, drought resistant and all these other things. And I don't say there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but I don't say that there's anything necessarily right with that. Because you see, when God created the universe, he said it was good. Me personally, I'm acceptable of what God has created and say, hey, it's good for me, you know. Now, I'll admit that, you know, there are different plants and animals, and even myself, that's under the curse. And yeah, I'd kind of like that curse to be removed. But in order for me to do that, I must come into sync with God himself. I must come into union with my Father in heaven, who created the universe, who created the world, who created the times and the seasons that we live in. And when I do that, when I spend the time to be with God, when I spend the time to talk to God, when I actually look around and I see, oh, this couldn't have just happened. God made that. God designed this. God made it in such a way that I could look at this leaf and say, wow, the leaves that I'm looking at are green, but this leaf is red and it fell off of a tree that has green leaves. So because it fell, there must be something about the times and the seasons that's telling me, oh, it's turning red. Fall is coming. It's a sign of the times. It's a sign of the seasons. It's a sign that fall is approaching. Fall is here. God will send you always a notification of what he's doing. God said in his word, he says, I would not do anything except that I first tell my prophets. Well, okay, you know, so then you go out and look for a prophet and you kind of go, well, you know, they're always telling me, you know, prosperity and good things, you know, and how everything's going to be hunky-dory. And you kind of didn't feel real comfortable with that. And neither do I, frankly, because I don't know about you, but if I were this leaf, I wouldn't be thinking that everything's getting better when I just fell off the tree. <laughs> and I wouldn't want you to come, you know, out of your tree, so to speak and lose it when really it's just a season you're going through. And that's kind of what the Word of God is meant to do for you. You're meant to study the Word of God, to apply the Bible in all of its fullness, so that you would see how God deals with life in general. That's why we have the Old Testament as well as the New Testament recorded for us. It's so that we can see people who lived who existed, who had personal relationship with God and spoke directly to him one-to-one. -one. Did you know you could talk to God one-to-one? -one? Every single day of your life, you can talk to God. He's listening. Sometimes, in certain seasons, God's going to talk to you. Maybe, in fall, he's already spoken to you and he really is just trying to get your attention and tell you, hey, it's fall, get ready. In Signs of the Times, lots of times we miss what's happening because all of a sudden one day we wake up and go, wow, how fast, where, where, where did it go? You know, it got cold all of a sudden in you. That kind of, that chill woke you up. Well, last night, I heard thunder. Man, we've had 100 degree weather, you know, and it's like, well, there wasn't any thunder, you know, except in the mountains. But I heard thunder and I heard lightning. And the last few days have been kind of cooler at night. So, this morning we had a little sprinkle, a little rain, you know, and I looked out at my tree, you know, that stands just close to my apartment, and I saw that, wow, how beautiful. The tree had turned partially red, especially where the sun shines on it. And I thought, wow, it's long. And you know, in the fall seasons, there are things that God has said he's doing that we should pay attention to. Now, obviously, in your world, fall may be a little different time span. Possibly, like in the Middle East right now, I guess it's kind of like a spring thing, you know? Huh. Or maybe it's fall. But the point being is that in every part of the seasons of wherever you are, God has created certain things that you should do. You know, like when you're in spring, you plant, 
when you're in summer you reap, when you were, you know, in spring you sow, but you know, and plant. But when you were in spring, or when you were in summer, you reap, you know, and fall you kind of do harvest, you know, you begin to harvest some of the fruits of the labor that you've done through spring and summer. And that's kind of where we're at now in fall. We need to pull in and to pull back and to begin to save those things for the winter. Because the winter when it's long, when it's cold, when we can't plant and sow, when we can't really go out and get things, we should already have things in our barns. We should already have stored things in our life. We should already have prepared for those things that are coming upon our lives. Because you see, not only does the world go through seasons, but you do. Yeah, every year you go through a season, you know, you get these emotional roller coaster rides, you know, and you kind of figure out, well, you know what? In winter, I'm kind of a downer, you know, because it's kind of like not as much sun, you know, I need a little more brightness and lightness in my life. So you spend more time with brightness and lightness, you know, a little more joy, you know, a little more peace, a little more worship, you know, and you kind of figure that one out. But then when you get older, likewise, you go through these seasons because, you see, there's also a time for when you were born. You know, a time when you were born again of the Spirit, that you became a spiritual being and you began to adapt yourself to God's timing, God's purpose, and God's design for your life. You began to walk in the Spirit. You began to talk in the Spirit. You began to move in the Spirit of God. And as you learned who the Spirit was and how He worked, you began to realize that He was leading you into certain things at different seasons of your life. When you were young and born again, you were just all into milk of the word, you know, everything was like, oh, bless me, bless me, feed me, feed me, take care of me, you know, and you kind of got the gifts of the Spirit, and you got all these wonderful little prosperity doctrines, you know, and you played with them, and you had fun with them, and you dinked around with them, and you learned about tithing, and you learned about giving, and you learned about getting, and you learned about receiving, and you learned about doing things for yourself, you know, and with yourself, and all those things. But then as you became less of a baby and more of a child of God, you began to grow up in the season of your life. And that season of being a baby passed. You no longer sucked your thumb. You no longer stuck your fingers in your ears. You were no longer rebellious, but you wanted to kind of do a little more. You were a little excited, so you got into worship, and you got into participating in those things that were easy to do. You know, at your church, or at your congregation, or assembly, or wherever it was that you decided to pick up the guitar and began to play or you took some lessons on how to develop as a drummer, or you became a worship leader, or you became a missionary. And you began to experience and experiment with different things that you could do in the body of Christ. And you had fun with it because you were a child of God. And during that season, it was wonderful. But then you began to get older, and you began to date, and to get into relationships that weren't as easy. They were, matter of fact, a little challenging. People began to say things to you that you didn't like. They began to do things that you didn't agree with. You began to act like and become more like a child of God and a son of God because you began to walk with God in a personal, intimate way. You began to say, you know, there's something more that I'm not getting. There's something I don't understand that seems to be conflicting with how I believe. And so you had to kind of deal with that issue. You either accepted what was going on in your life and you began to talk to God about it and kind of like, you know, get some friction, but guess what? You had to still get along, so you learned how to develop relationships. You learned how that relationships aren't always about agreeing, but they're about coming together in a unity that God himself places together. You know, where the two shall become one? Well, that was meant not just to be for marriage, but it was meant to be you and some other believer. Whether it be male or female was irregardless. It wasn't important. But it was about you and some other person becoming one with God. Because that was the way that church was intended. Because the marriage of the Lamb with the bride is all about how the church and Jesus come together as one. And it's a beautiful thing and it's glorious because it is so diverse of all the different people that there are in the world that are Christian that the beauty of how he brings them together is shocking to most people. And so as you learned in that season of life that you were growing up in, you developed also that idea that Wow, man, I'm not perfect. I need to be forgiven. And so you no longer treated yourself as like the righteous one that you thought you were when you were just a son of God, but you began to become developed fully as a mature man of God. And as you learned that you were a sinner, 
and that you were saved by grace, you were no longer a child tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine that came along, and the wind blew, and you didn't get all jumping up and excited just because something happened in the world. You didn't get all whacked out because the political scene had changed. You didn't become like, you know, those people that just kind of get blown like sails, you know, it's just every time the wind shifted, you know, the sail got blown back and forth and just flapped in the wind. You weren't one of those people anymore. You were the mast that people could attach to, that you were a pillar in the temple of God. You became a man of God, solid and founded on the foundation of the word of God. And as Jesus used you, you became more intimate with him in a personal way that you never dreamed of, because you no longer saw him as just the son of man able to console you and to comfort you whenever you felt like, oh my God, I'm having a hard day. But rather you became, and he became to you, the son of God, crucified, died, and rose again. You began to take up your cross and follow Jesus. You began to realize, wow, there's more to this Christianity than sucking my thumb. There's more to this relationship thing than just getting along with everybody, but that I have to actually lay down my life for someone else. And some of you have experienced that in marriage, and sadly in divorce. That you weren't able to lay down your life quite the way that you thought. And you've come up with excuses and reasons and, you know, those developmental problems that you've gone through with God. And that God has changed you and made you into the image that he wants you to be now. And now you're kind of like struggling with it a little bit because you've gone through some of the fall of life. And you're reaching now towards the preparation time then this older part of your life that you become a mature person, how have you adapted the wisdom of God into your life to become that person that people would call a sage or a minister or a man with God? That's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be fulfilled in the completeness of what he intended. So he's going to take you through seasons. God is going to take you through doubt, through fear, through rejection, through backslidden, through falling away, through falling forward, through falling down. God is going to pick you up. God is going to set you down. God is going to move you around. Because you see, the wind bloweth whither it will. You neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. God chooses whom he uses. And when he does, he chooses to take them through a lesson process that is exactly the same as he does with creation. He takes those parts of your life that you have covering you. Because you see, you're a planting of the Lord. God said that you are a tree of righteousness. And as a tree, there's times where he's going to take your leaves and expose you to the winter. Expose you to the light. And you'll be cold. And you'll be standing alone. And the bitter winds of life will blow on you. But the sap that's in you those things that you pull from your roots and that you're able to express upward and to reach outward with the branches of what your faith is will reflect back to God the fact that He planted you. He created you. He caused you to grow in the way that you could go. He made you into the person that you are today because He wanted you to go through these seasons. He wanted you to become the fulfillment of His destiny for you because He is alive and you are fading. He must become more, and you must become less. So as you get older in the Lord, as you go through the seasons of life every year, it prepares you for the seasons of life that you go through through the volume of years that you have. Whether you be a baby Christian, just now getting saved, you've been a baby Christian for a couple years, or a child of God, where you become a little bit older, terrible twos, you know, and trying threes, and you later become a teenager, you know, in the Lord, and you try out all these different relationships and you experience them in some way and learn something from them. Or whether you become a follower of Jesus, or you whether you become a disciple of Jesus, or whether you are experimenting and learning to become a minister of God. But at some point in time, when you get old, you become a man of God, a man with God. And when you do, then it becomes less about you and more about Him. You don't care when the world goes that way because you're going that way. You don't care if the world goes that way because you're going that way. You don't care what the world does because you're standing strong in the Lord. So whenever you see all these seasons of life that are coming upon the world to cause it to change because it is coming to an end and that sooner or later the seasons will change, 
don't be surprised when fall comes into you, when fall is expressed to you, when parts of your life are taken away so that God could develop in you the strength of character to survive the winter that's coming. Rather, stand strong in the Lord. Be confident of that place that God has placed you in and be assured that God is with you. Because as surely as the sun rises and the rain falls on the wicked and the good, God has caused you to come to this place in your life. God has developed in you the graces and the mercies that He wants you to have so that you would be the planting of the Lord, the tree of righteousness. That in your season, yes, you will give shade to others and comfort. But also in the winter of your soul, in the fall, of your life, you will also be the strength of God manifested to a world that this is what to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And let Him direct your path. Let Him lead you in the seasons of your soul and direct you in the righteousness of God as He walks you through this thing we call life.